Hey guys, this is Mohan Pober, and in today's video, I'm going to show you what I learned from Warren Buffett and how you can use some of those lessons into, I, I guess, and use them in your own life, even if you don't have any business experience or, or even if you don't have any existing business or investment, I'm going to show you a few lessons where you can take and, and just use them right away. Now, obviously, I'm not Warren Buffett, uh, but I, I read a lot about him. I watched uh, all of the documentaries out there on him, pretty much everything that I could find about him. And that's pretty much what I'm doing in the last few years, just in a very uh, lower uh, level scale, uh, smaller businesses. So Warren Buffett is buying billion dollar companies. We're doing the same with smaller businesses, usually businesses doing between one to 10 million a year in sales. So I'm gonna show you what I took from Warren Buffett into small business and yeah, let's, let's get to it. Oh, and yeah, if you like this type of content, subscribe. I promise you, you won't regret it. Uh, this is what this challenge is about, basically business, buying businesses with no experience, no capital, and what can we do so we have other people manage those businesses for us. Now, let's start with the type of investments we're talking about. We're talking about private businesses. Now, why private businesses? Basically, because Warren Buffett invests in them. Obviously, he's now dealing with public companies and all that, but initially, Warren Buffett was basically in the private sector. That's what we're in. It's very similar to work with public companies and private companies, but I guess it's, it's, it's very different in a way. So, first of all, with private companies, I think what, what we really like about it is just the, the PE ratio is really lower compared to public companies that are listed in the stock exchange. So that just that gives, I guess, a lot of opportunities to, to investors and people who want to get into businesses. In the end of the day, some of the returns that an investor can get in the private market is unlike anything in the public market. Obviously, there are um, exceptions to the rules, but in, in general, if you're investing in private companies, you have much higher returns compared to what you can get in, in, in public companies. So after we just gave an initial uh, brief about what we're going to talk about, the type of companies, let's start with some rules. And the first one is buy good companies. Now, the, the first question that comes up to mind is how you define a good company. Now, a good, a good company, as a first rule, is a company that's providing a nice amount of cash flow consistently. So for Warren Buffett, for him to invest into a business, he don't want to get into businesses that uh, ideally, obviously, he won't get into startups unless it's like, I don't know, maybe he's doing uh, angel investments on the side, but his main investment criteria, he's going into businesses that many times existing for many, many years. They have um, very clear, um, I guess, picture for that, of that business. He knows what it's about. Those businesses as many times existing for 10, 20 years, and he's going into those businesses because he know, hey, I'm going to buy this business. This is the amount of cash flow I'm expecting to get because that's the amount of cash flow I got, I saw in that business for many, many years now. The second thing to focus on is just a business that it's easy, is easy to understand. So Warren Buffett, if you, if you notice his investments, he's not in getting into things that he, he don't understand about. Like he is not getting into, uh, he didn't get into the, the, the area of, of technology, of the internet boom. He, he didn't invest in those businesses just because he said that he's not under, he don't understand about them. And that's why he's not getting into that space at all. He's investing in businesses he understands, like Coca-Cola. Because Coca-Cola, he said, he understands that business. Everyone will want to buy and drink Coca-Cola. That's why he's getting into those type of businesses. Now, the way we apply it in, in our firm, in our investment firm, and now the businesses that we're looking for, we're mostly looking for businesses with, um, I guess, an owner that is looking to retire. So usually baby boomer that's looking to retire. And the reason we do that is because many times those owners owning those businesses for many, many years. I'm talking five, 10, 20 plus years sometimes. So we know we can get into those businesses. They're very, very stable. We know exactly how much they made in the last few years. And you'll see like, maybe they don't grow as fast as technology companies, but they're stable. You know what you're buying into. It's literally um, stable as buying a real estate that you know will bring you income from rent. A main reason for us to get into those businesses is because those owners, I mean, they were treating those businesses like their babies. And many times they'd like to get some money out from all of their work over the last few years. And we're just providing them a great exit opportunity uh, when we buy an, an, an offer to buy their business. Now, the main reason that I like those type of businesses is because, because they're being in, 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 I guess, in the market for so long and the owners are usually um, quite old, like he's, you know, he's, he's many times in his uh, uh, late 60s, maybe even. And the way that he grew that business was mostly from word of mouth. So for many, many years, it grew slowly, slowly, slowly from mostly word of mouth and the quality of their product. And what I like about that is that 
you can get into those businesses. You know that you have a stable cash flow, but imagine if you're bringing in technologies and, and softwares and, and just, you know, just the, the social media and all that space. When you bring those type of things into old businesses, I mean, the opportunities are just uh, insane. That's why I like those type of businesses so much. The cash flow is so stable, but then no one really using technologies. Like some of those companies we're talking to, they don't have a website, which is insane in, 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 in nowadays. I mean, at the same time, it's so exciting because you can bring in uh, the online world and, and getting lead and, and deal flow from, from the online space. And it's just insane. You can grow a business so fast. And at the same time, you have the stability that you know that that business is existing for 10, 20 years sometimes, and it's providing a very stable cash flow. Now, I guess just to add and say, you don't have to get into those businesses, at least for us, and I'm talking about the, the way that we're looking at businesses. Yes, we sometimes look at businesses that maybe are more distressed, but we, we will only get into those type of businesses if we know that there's some low hanging uh, fruit opportunities for us to get into. So if the business is not stable, but we see an opportunity, maybe even something like the, the, the internet space where we see, hey, there's not even a website or there's many companies out there with thousands of thousands of existing uh, lists of clients and they're not doing anything with them. They're not remarketing to them. They're not sending offers to them. They're not doing any joint ventures. And just the upside on some of those deals can be amazing. So sometimes we like to look into those deals. So if, even if there's no legit cash flow and that is stable, we might get into those deals because we see a very low hanging fruit opportunity to get into. Um, then obviously we will determine if and how much money, money we want to bring from home. And that's where we just make, uh, I guess we make decisions based on our risk criteria. But if we don't need to bring money from home and we can get into those businesses that are maybe not that stable, but we can help and grow them, then we might do that. Now let's get into the second rule um, of something that Warren Buffett is, is really, really sticking to and that we're also using in our investment criteria where we're looking to buy businesses. And that's going into a business with good management team. Now with Warren Buffett, he's very strict about that. He's getting into businesses that he really knows the people in those, those businesses. Like many times, again, he's getting into businesses where the owner is running that business for 20, 30 years sometimes. And it's just amazing to get into the, the, those type of businesses. Uh, that's what we ideally look for as well. For us in the business that we look into, um, it's it pretty similar. So we can get into a business and there's few options of who's gonna run the business for us. So first one is many times the owner just wanna stay as an employee. So you wanna uh, continue for a few more years before he retire. So he's just taking a salary. He's taking uh, a role of an employee while we buying the business from him. But then he just want to do his art, you know, so many, many business owners, they don't want to be involved in the business side of things. They just want to do whatever they're doing. Like an engineer just want to do his work. Um, someone like I have good friends who are just doing programming on the computer. And for them, they don't want to deal with anything else. They just want to program all day. And same goes with business owners, like engineers who just want to do their work. And we can buy them their business, take the business side of things, take the, all the marketing, all the HR, the finance, all that. And they can um, deal right now with their day to day uh, without dealing with the business side of things. And for them, they, they prefer that. So that's the first option. Either the owner is staying for us and running the business for us. Um, if he's looking to exit and retire, what we do is we just either promote someone from within. So many times someone usually in the C level in the business can take the role of that um, day to day manager. So, you know, in many businesses, especially in those businesses that run for 10, 20 years, someone else usually can take that role because he's been involved in the business for so long. He knows many times the business better than the actual owner who's not involved in the day to day, you know, in the dealing with clients anymore, dealing with the, I guess, menial tasks that the owner is just not used to anymore. So when you can take a person who have the ambition, who have the, who have the vision, you can take him from that role. And many times what we do is we just give him equity in the business, like, even five ten percent equity for someone like that can can the, the skin in the game and the, the the drive that someone can get from having that amount of equity is just amazing and you can grow really fast because you bring in young blood um, who's just energetic and and as much um, I guess talented as the owner many times now uh, the last option is if the owner is potentially leaving and there's no one inside that we can promote what we do is just we make sure that there is a transition period where we buy the business and the owner is there. And then we just find someone in the external market. We go out and we hire someone like any, 
any firm is doing. We just find a good HR team that will help us and we bring in someone who we believe can run the business for us. And again, usually we give them equity in the business to have skin in the game and, and help us grow that business. Because even like Warren Buffett, he's not running those businesses day to day. He got people to do it for him. And I gave you a perspective of what, of what we do. And I'm sure he's doing similar things. I know that many businesses that he bought, people still work for him many times as the uh, day-to-day managers. And many times they're starting their retirement plan and then he's bringing someone else to, to take over the business and, and help grow it, of course. And, and just to end that side of things of, of the, the, the good management team. So I think at least, at least personally and, and with everything that I'm trying to do is just, and, and I know Warren Buffett is really into that as well. It's just, he's trying to work with people he like. In the end of the day, um, even as an investor, you're, unless you're looking to, you're not going to run the day to day. You're going to have someone running that day to day for you who's going to give you weekly reports or monthly reports or whatever you agree on, obviously. So you're going to have a constant um, conversations and, and meetings with those people. So you want to make sure you like those people. You want to make sure you can uh, hang out in the same room with them for a few hours. Otherwise, in my opinion, it's just not worth it. It's not worth to, to work to work with assholes that you don't like. So whenever you look into a business, make sure that if you're the investor and you have someone managing that business, make sure, hey, that's a person I like and I can, I can be next to. And now we're getting into the third rule from Warren Buffett, which is the company need to be undervalued. Now, what that means, let's get into it. So for us, what that means is that, first of all, in that case, what I'm personally doing with my company and what Warren Buffett doing at this stage is a bit different because for us, for many deals, we don't need to use our own capital. There's other ways we can uh, leverage to buy those businesses. With Warren Buffett, and especially at this stage, he got access to so much capital. So he's using that capital, capital from, from his shareholders and, and investors. So our way of looking at a, a company that is undervalued is a bit different. I'll talk in my perspective on how we look at deals, uh, but for Warren Buffett, basically, he's doing his calculations and he's making sure that he's buying a business that, in his opinion, worth much more you know, on, on paper. And many times just looking at the balance sheet and, and the assets that you have can help you understand, hey, this business is actually worth much more than it's currently trading at. Or you see the potential in that business as well. Uh, the way we look at things is we make sure that there's a motivated seller. And when there's a motivated seller, we can get a deal that I don't like the word undervalued, but we can get a deal that is, in my opinion, just fair for both sides. So if someone is actually looking to sell the business, he's going to sell the business for a much uh, fair price than someone who's just running a successful business and got no ambitions to, to quit or leave the business anytime soon. So he can, I guess, be less flexible in the negotiation phase. He can pretty much demand whatever he wants. And if he if no one's giving it to him, he don't care because he's looking to stay in the business. At the same time, for us, if we're looking for motivated sellers and the person, the owner is actually motivated, he'll be much more open to some of the terms that we'll give him. Now, another thing for us, which I, I, I think I mentioned in other videos is we care much more about the terms of that deal than the actual, I, I guess, total price of that deal. So for us, with the deals that we're doing, and we're, we're doing mostly leverage buyout. So many times we pay an X amount at closing and then the rest of it is going to be structured over a few years, uh, many times using milestones of that business to basically pay for the, the owner. So for us, if the owner is more flexible on the back end of the deal, then we can be more flexible on the overall price of the deal. And I hope that makes sense. And that's how we look at deals and we make sure, hey, even if maybe, and again, I'm, I'm going back to this rule of having an undervalued business. So for us, as long as the, the deal can, I guess, find the terms that we want, then for us, it's very much just making sure that free cash flow covered that service. As long as that happens, we're good to go. And, and I think it's really important to just not be, never be nervous about a deal. I mean, there's over 2.6 million businesses for sale right now, listed with brokers. Those are businesses that are actually listed. I'm talking uh, mostly US and UK. Those are these our main markets. Now that's before talking about businesses who don't want to list their business for sale. And every business is for sale in the end of the day. We can approach businesses and that happens a lot that didn't even think about selling their business, but now that they have a potential buyer, they're open to the idea. So there's so many opportunities out there. That's why, in my opinion, we're, we don't need to pay premium for deals just because there are so many out there. 
it just uh, in my opinion worth it to just be more patient and look at more deals until you find a good one and that's why i mean look at warren buffett he don't have too many businesses compared to what he could have he's just doing one investment everyone has seen a while and he's just really sticking to those and staying with them for the long run another really interesting thing to look at is that even those businesses that are for sale first of all only one in about eight or nine that are listed will actually sell now the average it's funny to see that if you see the average of businesses that someone bought you see that the average multiples for someone who bought those businesses were about two times EBITDA uh, the pre-tax profit now what's interesting there is that when you actually go to look at websites that have uh, listing listed companies for sale many times their asking price is five times EBITDA or five times multiples on their pre-tax profit which is insane that's why first of all in my opinion most businesses uh, are not selling just because the broker he's promising I guess over exaggerated uh, price for their business and that's why um, no one's buying them it just they, they look at those businesses and they say hey why would I buy a business for five times multiples where the average is two times of businesses that actually uh, that actually had a transaction that completed so that's why I think it's really important for you to look at many deals but then remember especially when you look at deals with brokers is that brokers are getting paid uh, many times as soon as they list the company and they're getting paid many times monthly retainer without even considering the fact that they're getting um, offers for their owners or not so it's really important and when you look at deals with brokers remember their agenda their agenda many times is just to make more money just from uh, the retainer that they're getting from owners which in my, in my opinion is sad because the broker is out there mostly making his money from getting retainers or many deals versus just working on a success fit and, and obviously i'm not talking about all brokers some brokers work just on a success fit which in my opinion is better because he actually want to do the deal versus brokers who are getting retainer every month who care um, not uh, i guess even more many times about just the retainer that they're getting so they don't care if the business is listed for one year they'll get paid for as long as the owner is willing to list the business with them so yeah there, there's so many opportunities out there you need to be selective you can be selective just because there are so many deals out there and if you can't close this one just go to the next one it's numbers game in the end of the day and i, I really hope that you like the the lessons that i found that warren buffett is using every day in his deals and how we apply it to small businesses and i guess some kind of uh, leverage buyout type deals private equity type deals because Warren Buffett have access to pretty much unlimited amount of capital at this point. So I want to show you another option where you can pretty much follow the same rules, but apply them to small businesses, even if you don't have much capital uh, for you. So yeah, if, if you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think. And um, yeah, let me, let me know what videos you want me to do, because I'm, I'm looking to do many more of those. I, I, I'm getting amazing feedback and I, I really appreciate it. So keep the feedback going. I like to see comments from you, emails from you. I love it guys so yeah definitely it's, it just keeps me motivated to to continue to to do that so thank you very much and i'll, I'll see you soon